This is Shannon with Dogwood Crochet, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet this sunflower basket. So this is one of my classic designs. Uh, it's been really popular on my Etsy shop, so I wanted to share this tutorial to show you the steps of how to make it. So this basket is great just as kind of using as a tray or a display bowl. Um, you could put it on your entry table or coffee table. You could put plants in it. You could put your crochet hooks in it. You could put any kind of decor that you want in it. So I'll be showing you how to make this lovely basket today. So to start out, the materials that you're going to need are a nine millimeter crochet hook and then three balls of yarn. So I'm going to be using Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick, and I'm going to be making the basket in kind of some fall colors. So I'm going to be using barley for the center, and then this is butterscotch for the petals, and then I'm going to use this color which is toasted almond for the edges of the basket. So we'll start out with our color that we wanna use for the center of the sunflower. And we're going to start by making a magic circle. So I wrap the yarn around my finger three times and then I place my hook under all three strands I pull this last strand under the other two and then chain one. Okay, now we're going to place six single crochet into the circle. So insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. So that's two, three, four, five, and six. So we just finished six single crochet into the circle. So that was our first round. Now I'm going to pull on my tail to close the circle. You might need to pull on this other strand to tighten it up first and then pull on the tail again. So now we can see the circle is pretty much closed and then I can pull on the tail to just finish it off. Okay, so we have six single crochet in our first round. Now we're going to slip stitch to this first stitch of the round. So yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull it through the loop on our hook. Now we're going to chain two. Now we're on round two. We're going to work two double crochet into each stitch of the round. So yarn over, insert our hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that was one double crochet. We're gonna do one more into that first stitch of the round. Okay, and then we're going to do two into the next one. And we'll just continue this around and by the end of round two, we should have 12 stitches. So I'm going to continue working on this and I will meet you back when I have finished round two. 
Okay, so I just finished round two. So I have 12 stitches at the end of round two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12. And so you wanna make sure don't place any stitches in this right here. This is where we slip stitched in at the end of round one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to place our hook into that first stitch of the round. And instead of slip stitching with our barley color, we're actually going to change colors at this point. So now I'm going to grab the butterscotch color, which I'm using for the petals. I'm going to place that over my hook. So I have the loop on my hook from my last double crochet. Then I have the first stitch of the round and then I just placed this new color over my hook. Now I'm just going to pull this color up and then I'm going to pull it through, just like that. Okay, so I just pulled this color through. Now I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now we can kind of pull on this brown tail here to tighten up that stitch. I usually like to tighten up the color changes at the end of the round so we can come back to that later but just for now we can kind of pull it a little bit tighter. So now we're going to do our first sunflower petal. So to do that, we're going to yarn over twice, and then we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch. Then we're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So then you have two loops left on your hook. Now we're going to repeat that. We're going to yarn over twice and we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch again and yarn over and pull up a loop. Five loops on our hook now. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And now we have two loops left on our hook and we're gonna yarn over and pull through those last two loops. So basically what we're doing for each petal is going to be a series of three treble crochet together. But because this first one, this chain four counts as one of those stitches. So that was our first petal. Now we're going to chain two. Now we're going to do the three treble crochet together. So yarn over twice, and then we're going to place our hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. We have four loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Now we're going to yarn over twice again. Insert our hook into the same stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Now we have five loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So now we have two loops on the hook again. We're gonna do this one more time. Yarn over twice. Insert our hook into the same stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Five loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And then finally we have two loops left on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. So that was our second petal that we just finished. Now we're going to chain two. And basically we just work that repeat around in each stitch of the round until we have 12 petals at the end of round three. So let's do one more petal together. I'm going to yarn over twice. 
insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, four loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over twice, insert my hook into that same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, five loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Two loops on the hook, we're going to yarn over twice, insert our hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, five loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and finally yarn over, pull through two. So basically what you do is just continue yarning over and pulling through two loops until you have two left. And then depending on how many trebles you've done already, you either finish off the petal or you do another treble. And then we chain two. So I'm going to continue working on the sunflower petals and then I will come back at the end of round three. Okay, so I'm almost at the end of row, round three here, but I wanna show you how I kind of tighten up this color change. So I have my pair of scissors. I'm just going to flip this over and pull on both of these ends here. So the ones that we change color with, this is from our magic circle. So this is in the middle of round one, but this is from the end of round two that we haven't cut yet. And then this is when we added our butterscotch color. So I'm basically just going to pull on each of these make sure they're nice and secure. And I'm doing this before I do my last petal. So right now I have 11 petals instead of 12. My 12th one is going to go in here, but I wanna secure this color change first. So basically what I do is I just tie a double knot. And then I cut this end here. It's pretty simple. Um, this is a basket, so I don't anticipate, um, you know, it's not gonna be kind of worn or like used really heavily. So this has done the trick for me. If you want to weave in your ends or secure them differently, feel free to go ahead and do that. But since this will be on the bottom or the wrong side of our work, these knots, these have worked just fine for me. So you could tie more knots, you could weave the ends in more, but um, that's kind of how I secure the color changes. So like I said, I have 11 petals so far, just need to finish the last petal. We're going into that last stitch. Okay, so we just finished our last petal. We're going to chain two. So now we can just count the petals together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Perfect. So we have 12 petals on our sunflower. Now we're going to change colors again. All right, so we're getting to the end of round three and we just chain two after our last petal. Now we're going to get ready to change colors. So I have my color for the outside edge of my basket and I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch. So if we're working into the top of the petal, you wanna find the stitch that's kind of in the top of the petal and then you can see there's two chains in between each one. So Mine tend to be a little bit looser than the chain twos. And that's kind of one way that you can find it. So right here, this stitch, we're gonna insert our hook 
and then I'm going to pick up my new color, just like we did before, place it over my hook, pull it up, and then pull it through the loop that was on my hook. And then we can pull tight on this piece of yarn to really secure it. <clears throat> now we're going to chain three. Now we're going to do one double crochet into this first stitch. Okay. And then we're going to do three double crochet into this chain two space here. Oops. three. Okay. So we just did three double crochet into that chain two space. Now we're going to do one double crochet into the top of this petal here. And then we're going to do three double crochet into the chain two space. One, two, and three. So we basically just repeat this pattern around for round four. We work one double crochet into the top of the petal and three double crochet into the chain two space. So I'm going to continue working this and I will come back at the end of round four. Okay, so I'm almost at the end of round four, but I'm going to do this color change again, just secure this before I add my last three double crochet. So like I showed you before, just pull on these ends here, not too tight, but just enough to secure them and then tie a double knot. And then I get my scissors and cut off the butterscotch one. All right, and then flip my work over and I have this chain two space left to work into. So I'm going to do my last three double crochet in there. And then I'm going to slip stitch to the first stitch of this round. I know it's a little bit hard to see with the black yarn, so sorry about that. But if you're working with a lighter color yarn, it'll be easier to see. You could also put a stitch marker um, but slip stitch to that. So by the end of round four, we should have 48 stitches and we just slip stitched. We're going to chain two. Now for round five, what we're going to do is place one double crochet in the first three stitches. Then we're going to do an increase in the fourth stitch. So an increase is two double crochet instead of one double crochet. So let's walk through it together. So we're going to do one double crochet into the first stitch of the round, one double crochet into the second stitch, and one double crochet into the third stitch. Okay, now we have our fourth stitch. We're going to place two double crochet into that or an increase. And then we're just going to repeat that all the way around. So we're going to count one, two, three. Each of those will get one double crochet and the fourth one will get two double crochets or an increase. So we have one, 
two, three, and then we increase. And we just repeat that around until the end of round five. At the end of round five, we should have 60 stitches. So I'm going to continue working on that and then I'll come back when I'm at the end of round five. Okay, so we just finished round five. We have 60 stitches. Now I'm going to slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. Now I'm going to chain two. Now we're going to double crochet in the front loop only of each stitch of the round. So we're not increasing. We're just doing one stitch in each existing stitch. So if you're looking at the stitch here, this is the back loop and this is the front loop. We're just going into the front loop like that. We're doing double crochet into each stitch, front loop only. So by the end of round six, we should still have 60 stitches. So this round will form the edges of our basket. So sometimes I do get some questions about how to make baskets stiffer or how to get them to stand up differently or like straighter, things like that. I have a few suggestions that you can try out if you're not um, completely satisfied with how your edges are looking. So the first suggestion would be to go down a hook size or two. Uh, especially for the edges of the basket, if you want them to be super sturdy and stiff, um, you might want to size down to an eight or a seven millimeter crochet hook for this step. So that's one suggestion. Another suggestion is the height of the stitch can also impact how stiff or not stiff your basket will be. So you could try using a shorter stitch like half double crochet or single crochet and you would probably need to do more rounds if you want them to be the same height but um, that could also help to make the edges of your basket a little bit more stiff and sturdy. Finally, uh, some of my other tips would just be to trust the process. You know, my edges are caving in now while I'm working on it, but once you finish, stretching them out like this can really help. And just kind of manipulating it with your hand, you can see already it's standing up much straighter now than it was before. So. I would suggest kind of playing around with those suggestions, seeing which one works for you. Um, and if you have any other suggestions for crocheting baskets, let me know in the comments. So I'm just going to continue working on this round. We will have 60 stitches at the end of the round. Once again, I'm doing one double crochet into the front loop only of each stitch. Okay, we just reached the end of round six. We should have 60 stitches. I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch and then chain one. 
So now for our final round, we're just going to place one slip stitch into each stitch. So a slip stitch, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop that's on my hook. And we just continue this around. So insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on the hook, pull one loop through the other loop. Just like that. So we just continue this all the way until the end of the round. This slip stitch also helps to give the edge of the basket a little more structure. So I'm just going to keep working on this and then I will come back when I'm finished. Okay, we're coming up on the end here. I forgot to mention, but you might want to place a stitch marker in that first slip stitch of the round. I can kind of tell there's a little bump here from where I started, so I didn't use a stitch marker, but it might be helpful, especially if you're a beginner, to place a stitch marker in that first stitch. But basically, now we should have 60 stitches at the end of the round again, and once I've done that last one, going to slip stitch into our first slip stitch of the round. And then I'm going to get my scissors and just fasten off. And then weave in this end. All right, and there we have it. We have our finished sunflower basket. So now that everything is fastened off and secure and everything, we can kind of play around with the edges if we wanna make them stand up a little bit more. We can just go around, stretch them out just like this. That usually does the trick for my baskets just to um, form them a little bit more to how I want them to look. So I'd say I'm pretty happy with that. Let's measure it just to give you an idea of the size. So let's see from, let's measure from the inside here. The inside of the basket looks like it's about 10 and a half diameter. And then the height here on this edge is about one and a half inches. But size and gauge doesn't really matter too much with this pattern. That's just a guideline of generally how large mine turned out. Um, if you crochet looser or tighter, your size might vary a little bit, but overall um, it should be within kind of the same ballpark. So thank you for watching this tutorial. Like I said, this pattern has been really popular on my Etsy shop, so I just wanted to show my appreciation for all of your support and come out with this video tutorial showing you kind of the details of the pattern. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more crochet tutorials. Thank you.